my name, Edison Agbanji. I run a company called Ancestral Essence. We've been going for about five, six years. What we've been trying to do is bring back the African understanding back to the Western world. The way it's been portrayed in the media through education, we kind of want everyone to get the real understanding of where it's coming from and realize this is the oldest tradition in the world and everyone has sort of taken it and made it their own but we still resemble the oldest people that were on this planet and our understandings come from the beginning. Spirituality to me is really an understanding of your internal consciousness. You see, we say spirituality is your spirit in this reality. Your mental health is based on how well you have access and knowledge of your spirit dealing with the story that you think your life is. So what we've tried to do is strip back all the stories, all the religions, all those kind of things, and just have you think of yourself as the actual essence, intelligent observer looking out at the world. You're the one who's looking outside at the world, not the world looking at you. And we want you to understand what that actually is and what that means to you and how without the understanding of that life, you're a slave in your own body. Our version of spirituality is where we have you make the connection with your ancestors. Um, these are not some fictitious um, people in the sky. These are not things that you're supposed to worship. These are not even things that you're supposed to pay true reverence to. This is just the relationship between a parent and a child carried on infinitum. Whenever you look in the mirror, you only see one of your ancestors. Your smile, your face doesn't belong to you. Someone else had that before you. And essentially, we want you to connect with that voice that you hear inside yourself the one that essentially tells you that don't do this or don't do that. The one that you curse yourself afterwards and say, you know, if only I just listened to myself on the end, listened to myself at the beginning, I heard it, but I went against it. None of these things are accident. And whenever you're speaking or communicating with someone, you have a conversation first, an internal dialogue with yourself. And after you finish that dialogue, then you speak. But who was it you were talking to? Who is the person you've always been talking to? Who is that wise one inside you that has been guiding you and helping you understand your life and give you some sort of protection from the worst impulses that you actually have? That would be your ancestors that have always been there from day one. They've been in your bones, then they've been in your blood, they've been in your mind. All we've been trying to, all we try to do is make you have that connection and then start you on the journey within. Everyone keeps talking about you need to go within, you need to go within, but no one actually tells you how. So we've devised methods over the years that we've been running through the courses we've been doing to help you do just that. So that inner voice, that voice that you hear inside, because people are under the misapprehension. If you can hear your inner voice, you're not your inner voice. You can't hear and be a thing at the same time. So essentially, we want you to understand how you use that inner voice to connect to the deeper aspects of yourself. For us, that's what spirituality is, not what you pray to, how you pray to, how many times a day you pray. None of those are of any relevance to us because we understand that you're praying to an idea outside of yourself. If you're looking at the world from inside yourself, surely your creation must be inside yourself as well. That's how we understand spirituality. Wow, okay. Religion is hope. Essentially, religion has always been, has was created by man to enable them to try and understand 
the world that they're actually in. If you look at most origin stories, people start them from religions. They start them from beliefs. Nothing that they can prove, but something they need to hang on because they've forgotten how they got here and they've forgotten why they came here. So the religion tries to fill the gap, which people don't actually have a memory of anymore. The problem as well is religion was always designed to make you believe that the way that the world is, even though it's unfair, if you pray, maybe one day it will become fair. You have to understand, the best way I describe it is, you have a book of rules written by man, and they just gave the name God as the author. There was no God that had. I always ask, what hand did God write the Bibles or these holy books with? And you obviously understand, he had no hands, of course. This was the hand of a man with a plan, and everyone's been living according to that plan ever since. So religion, as they say, reglo to bind, is really just be able to, it's just been designed to hold your mind in a place where you are easily controlled, still thinking as a child. And it's the concept of God has been a convenient idea um, because everyone needs to believe because they've forgotten who they are. I always think of, are you the creator? Well, if you ask the man who was blind, describe the stars, he couldn't. Why? Because he couldn't create the image of the stars in his mind to see, to be able to create. You're the one who creates all the images that you see. You're the one who deciphers what you hear. The fact that two people don't see the same thing is because the process that they're using to create those images are different. So in effect, they can't see the same thing because they haven't created the same image. So the concept of God, be it the sun, be it the um, sky, be it whatever idea you want to believe, is really just the way in which men have used some sort of idea to create their reality or to create a reality which under one God, you can rule everyone. So these religions have been fighting to essentially be in a scenario where their God is the creator, their God, sometimes are even vengeful, which is absolutely crazy. How could one God kill its creator? Creation, when a mother would know not to harm her own child. So as far as religion, a God and all these different concepts, they're made by man so that they can control other men. But the concept of one God that created everything, people still need to work out what everything actually is. Okay, you have to ask the question as regards to spirituality existing within us and external. The fact is, you're the one who creates the external reality inside yourself. Have you noticed that when you look, you see things from the top of your head and all the way around your eyes? Your eyes are not what you see with. You can't do two things at the same time. Your eyes takes in information and then you create the image based on your knowledge, understanding and your basic, um, how do you say, comprehension of reality. So you're the one who's creating what you perceive as uh, reality or anything you encumber. So spirituality, which is essentially your spirit operating in this reality, is purely inside you. Outside of you is belief. That's why two people can see the same thing because they two have two different opinions and their two different opinions are judging the image that they see. All you're ever doing is sitting down right here in the now looking at the world. Nothing will happen to you as long as you're in that situation. As soon as you create an image of the future or create an image of the past, that's when your focus is now on those images. All of that is taking place inside you. 
to live for spirituality, which is really just your spirit in this reality, can only be internal. Outside, you're just judging what you've created.